Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And uh, we're seeing things relatively quiet ahead of uh, ECB Day. Um, we saw a pretty good move here in the euro. Um, I was on FACE yesterday, and we gave some details yesterday <clears throat> about why we thought the euro could, you know, move higher. When we came in here, if you remember, we were trading, I think we hadn't quite made, we hadn't made the highs yet. We were looking for... 1287 and we we're up in here and we we're thinking that we could still push higher we, we put uh, 87 actually in the room it said a stretch of you know 1293 obviously we pushed higher but the market uh, that 1287 kept in check by one pip and then we started to slide back and of course the adp data but one of the reasons that we were referring to that and we'll get to the information on the news on the ecb just a quick overview um it was because this market just simply didn't want to back down. And it was telling you, it's almost like as if it had, like I talked, used Blake's analogy about the beach ball underwater. And you just couldn't keep this thing down. It, it wanted to punch through and take out those stops. It did. We came back further than I did, uh, than I had expected. Now, that being said, uh, our bias chart support, look at that, was 1220. And look where we went to, right to 1220 to the pip. Um, so the levels have been fairly good. And the reading has been, you know, overall okay on how we're playing this out. And as I mentioned before, um, you know, someone would have looked at this and said, wait a minute, how can Boons be at all-time levels and you're talking about the euro going high, which was the case we were talking about yesterday. And actually, not only do we go higher, because we were saying, hey, look, once you get past DCB, we could even be up here potentially, because it was holding, you know, pushing so well, we could potentially be here 1324, 1318. Oh, I'll be doggone if we weren't even there by yesterday morning. You know, I'm not there, but had got all the way up here to 1306, SciShow 7. Um, that being said, it's not so much a, a Euro thing. It is Euro, but I'm saying is de facto in the sense that it's just uh, just repricing dollars. That's it. Uh, how far we can break lower here? Um, one of the things that we talked about, we still have the Italian debt situation. We had that when we came on. So that wasn't the reason why the euro was then pulling back. That had already been out. Um, and um, on the ECB, they're looking at uh, some TLTRO. Um, so that I, we were talking about that actually when I was on face. We we're trading the 12 nights ago. Well, you know, this isn't a bad place if you want to go and take a short going to ECB. Now, I didn't think we'd fall back this far. I thought maybe we'd come back, maybe it's around 1250-ish, okay, and then kind of hold in there. But we fell further. That's fine because you really stopped out a lot of people and probably spooked the market a little bit. So, But we're still holding right here in this area. Uh, but I think maybe there's a possibility we could – we might dip just a hair below 12, and then I think from there we should be start to move higher. But we shall see how things play out. Uh, Mexico tariffs, that thing still hasn't been resolved. We got a good punch higher uh, in early Asian trading. Now, I was thinking we might be able to take out these highs. And I thought, we remember, we've got that good area there. Uh, we'll get to that right now. Just a moment. You know, at this time of the morning, or time of the show, we usually do just a quick overview and stuff before we get into the news. Those markets that may have moved, see where we're at. Well, when we got this jump back up in here. I was thinking we might be able to get into this zone here. Here's that 1988 to 1995, and you got the 61 percent. I was thinking they might be able to punch the high. Uh, I forgot uh, who was the one uh, that actually grabbed along. I didn't even notice it was already moving, and I looked and I was like, whoa, what happened? And uh, one of the guys, oh my God, I can't even remember who it was, he grabbed along and he was asking, uh, hey, where are the levels? And we were talking about this. And uh, for me, I was saying, look, I want to see it come up in here and start to stall. I'll take a short. I don't want to be long. And we did run out of gas. But um, like I said, I was hoping we could punch up even higher and come into here. Because I think they'll resolve something on that. Okay. Um, let's just take a quick look where the dollar is on this. Well, we got a pretty good little move here on the dollar here. Actually, um, we actually had our buy chart support yesterday for 96.79, and we took that out by, I think, four pips. Now, our our analysis for us to start the week, we were already looking for a pullback. See, first target is 96.63, the 38%. Well, there's that 38%. And um, 
So if you already had a pretty good pullback, I think really any moves up in here is just to sell on the dollar. You know what I mean? And as I mentioned before, I don't think the dollar is going to heck in a handbasket or anything like that, but it's just a repricing. So any rallies back, really, you know, look, here's F56 on the daily. I think you're going to be, you know, selling opportunities um, as uh, we try and figure out what's going to happen. And also another thing is also that um, we're going to be looking at uh, – you know, data continue to come in, you know, somewhat weaker. Now, we did get a surprising low number out of the ADP. It's going to be interesting to see if we get that out of the, out of the employment. So we can have some good volatility today and tomorrow. Uh, one of the things I did go on note 10 in the room, um, this is about three days ago. I said, um, wow, uh, something like, not be careful, but something like, wow, is volatility starting to come back? I go, it looks like volatility may be come back. And, because I was trying, because I, I was saying, I think we're starting to see a little bit of good way, good two way movement, and actually, maybe although I think that had to do a lot more with stops. This movement we saw here in the euro, wow, you know that was a pretty good move here. Well, today we have ECB, and I think that any dips back, if we pull back in here, is going to be a buying opportunity. I, I mean, yes, I think a buying opportunity, but I mean, I think they'll be able to pick them up and they'll push them up higher. What I'm thinking is, and I was thinking about this last night before I went to sleep. I think we're going to see some good two-way action where, okay, if we take the dip down here on TRO, TR or whatever, and then I think we can rally them up. And then I think if we do dip below 12, uh, then I would exit around 12.58, see if it dips back down here towards the 12.20, buy it again, let it rally back up, and then maybe we start to slide back as we go into NFP. But then again, the risk is maybe in a P may not be so strong, so we'll see how that happens. My point is, I think we're going to start to see some two-way action. I think we're on the cusp of that right now. And that's what I was I posted in the chat room about three days ago. Um, Dolly M trading relatively quiet, okay? And we're going to get into the news. This is my take on, remember, on those yen pairs was, you know, if we can't get the move here in the dollar yen in consideration as to what the S&Ps are doing, Hence, my thought was we don't have a lot of big range in the other cross rates for the yen, and they haven't added up to too much at, at all, okay? Um, whether it be the euro yen, Aussie yen, so um, obviously sterling yen, but I'm saying is um, this to me was an indicator because it was the spoos that are moving, <clears throat> so <clears throat> we should have seen a pretty good move here, so that was my, hence my thought there. Dollar CAD, um, this is also... Uh, played out to fruition fairly well. Um, we talked about this on Monday. If we got that close below 34.77, it was an outright sell straight up. No doubt about it. No, it's pulling back. It's a straight up sell. And we did see that continued follow through. Uh, yesterday, uh, we had our bias chart support. We did here, which was um, 33.62. The low was, I think it was 63. Hold on. Uh, yeah, 33.63 right there, 33.63. Yeah, we had this trend line here. So we've kind of got a little bit of a bounce off of that area, so we shall see. But uh, it's a sell, uh, no doubt about it. I mean, we talked about it. The bulls have just – we said about this close on Friday leaving a bad taste, and if we got past 34.77 on the close, we would really start seeing some good selling, and certainly we've got that, and we've seen the follow-through. Uh, but you're trying to push up a little bit here at 12.41. I really hope it, it pulls back down here because uh, I don't have any positions. I'm flat right now. That being said, uh, oh, well, let's go and take a quick look on the data. Top of the hour, we have employment uh, in Eurozone, um, GDP. So we do have potential here for some good volatility. Um, challenger layoffs. Well, obviously, the ECB, that's a big one. Jobless claims, productivity. Canadian exports. <clears throat> These are at 8.30 Eastern and Keep an eye on the 10 a.m. Eastern uh, IBPMI, Canadian data. Obviously, the big mover is going to be the ECB. 
So let's go on and move into this. <clears throat> see what we, let's get a lay of the land and see what kind of levels we want to go with. The European Central Bank will try to give the alien Eurozone economy a fresh boost today, but ECB President Mario Draghi will want to keep some powder dry as an escalating global trade war could necessitate for the action down the line. In a long flag move, the ECB will likely offer new sets of loans. We talked about that yesterday in TLTRO. That's what we're saying. When we were making that move up there, uh, and our bias chart was uh, resistance was 87. I said, well, look, you know, now we'll, you know, you can get short if you'd like uh, <clears throat> for a pullback with the ECB. Obviously, the big turner was that very poor ADP number, which shot us back up, but we did, you know, come back in rather aggressively, too. Um, <clears throat> But it says could necessitate for that action down the line. In a long flag move, the ECB will likely offer new sets of loans that will effectively pay banks if they borrow cash to pass it on to the households and firms. Beyond that, expect Draghi to keep the overall tone dubbish by keeping the door open to further stimulus and maintain the prospect of a further delay in the bank's post-crisis rate hike. Hey, folks, there's nothing wrong with that. Now, I'll, I used to be one to beat up on Draghi, too, for this dubbish. But, hey, look, with the Fed doing their own little back uh, backpedaling dance, come on. I mean, there's, no, there's going to be absolutely nothing wrong, especially in light of <clears throat> the issue with China and uh, Trump wanting, you know, tariffs on Mexico, tariffs on Europe, tariffs on Japan, tariffs on Czechoslovakia, tariffs on, you know, uh, Afghanistan. I mean, he wants tariffs on everything. So there's no, like I said, you know, I think that is going to be well within reason for him to be as dovish as he wants to be. Um, let's go and move into the markets. World stock markets are currently in the tug of war between the gloom surrounding trade tensions, Jewish protectionism and recession fears, and the offsetting positive of the past week's dramatic rethink of the Federal Reserve. It's, that's not new to us, folks. We've been talking about that for, you know, well over two weeks. I mean, really pushing it real hard about that rethink. Um, of the Federal Reserve and other central banks' policy trajectories toward further easing. Will or even can central banks act fast enough to stave off a U.S. recession and a global downturn? Or does it all now hinge on Washington's aggressive stance on trade tariffs with the China and most recently Mexico? The negative side certainly pulled hard over the past 24 hours. Talks broke down last night between the U.S. and Mexican officials on averting planned U.S. tariffs to force migration controls at the U.S.-Mexico border. President Trump said uh, first thing that tariffs rise against both China and Mexico would go ahead unless there were movement and talks with both countries. The combined hit to the U.S. economy next year of both planned tariff increases against China and Mexico is estimated by many economists to be as much as a percentage point move and will likely be enough in many miles to tip the world's largest economy into a technical recession. In the middle of an election year and the U.S. and global economy is already slowing, evidence on Wednesday by surprising weak private sector jobs reading for May and a drop in JP, JP Morgan's all industry business survey index to its lowest since 2016. And moving on, we already know about Wall Street cut, uh, Wall Street, blah, blah, blah. Uh, European futures have shifted uh, to the price chance of yet another cut in the Fed's ECB's already negative uh, negative 0.4 deposit rate by year. And while many assume it will cut inflation forecasts and signal more generous terms on its new targeted cheap loans uh, scheme or TLTROs, okay? German 10-year balloon hit a record low of minus 24 basis points. First thing on Thursday, so man, this boon just keeps going and going and going. Um, and I'm looking at it, boy, it's still this punch deep for the higher, higher price, lower in yield. Um, let's see, Bank of England Chief Carney speaks in London today, so keep that eye in mind. For those trading, uh, the uh, sterling. Okay, yen up on Mexican tariff fears and investors wait the ECB. Investors will focus on the euro, which has strengthened recently on the back of the dollar weakness. As I said, it's really, you know, people say, well, look, the euro's in so much bad shape. It's this, it's that. Yeah, I know. But as I said before, tell me something that I don't already know. So really, it's, it's moving based on a de facto move of the dollar index because the euro comprises 56.4%. So one goes one way, the other one goes the other way. Yin, yang. 
ACB meets on Thursday with traders looking to see how concerned policymakers are about the signs of a downturn in growth. Recession fears are sweeping across the world and central banks have in recent weeks cut rates and will signal the start of a global monetary easing cycle. Japanese yen has been the main benefactor from a shift towards assets investors seem uh, deemed safer. President Trump unexpectedly told Mexico last week to take a harder line on curbing illegal immigration. The Mexican peso already saddled with trade concerns took a hit after credit agency Fitch downgraded sovereign debt on Wednesday. The ECB will try on Thursday's meeting to give the ailing Eurozone a boost and may even set the stage for more action later this year of escalating global trade war, unravels the benefits of the year of monetary stimulus. What matters during the ECB meeting today is whether the council will stick to its view that the economy will recover in the second half of the year, said Anch Prefjek, analyst at Commerce Bank. Draghi would have to have a sound very concerned about the growth and inflation to cause a reaction in the euro. So if, as long as he's not too, too, too bearish, but there's nothing wrong with him saying, hey, look, you know, uh, I'll be, I think he can easily make that case by laying the blame on U.S. and China and basically, hey, look, you know, we're just we're just on the side here. But, you know, we, we can get we can get bumped around on this on this uh, merry-go-round ride. So, hey, we're just strapping in the, set, the safety belts just in case. And so really he doesn't have to make it look so bad for them. He just indicate that. So I don't think he's necessarily going to do that because I don't think he wants to come out shaking all kinds of confidence um, in the Eurozone. I think it would do mo- – more harm, but there's nothing wrong with him making the case that they're going to leave things open. And I think that'll be the case. So hopefully we can see the euro dip. Then we'll see it bop, bop back up. But I think we'll see some good volatility on both sides. So uh, one thing I wanted to hit on the euro ECB because I did want to see like what are the things that we're looking at as we go into that. So the European Central Bank will try to give an alien eurozone boost on Thursday. We'll persuasive. Uh, uncertainty already de- a denting trade. Big central banks like the ECB and the U.S. Federal Reserve appear to have given up plans to tighten policy. Um, a long flag move, the ECB is likely to offer banks if they borrow cash from the central bank to pass on to households and firms. We already saw that part. ECB Draghi is not expected to do more than that because he will want to keep some measures in reserve as economic outlook darkens. Draghi is certain to maintain a dovish tone, leaving the open possibility of more stimulus, the prospect of further delay in the bank's first post crisis rate hike, but the Italian who leaves his post on October 31st cannot afford bigger moves for now as ECB policy arsenal is near depleted after years of stimulus. While the policymakers say they have plenty of tools left, they've already pushed their main interest rate below zero and bought some 2.6 trillion euros worth of bonds, meaning the scope of more stimulus has shrunk. So if you look at it that way, even if he is driving to make the case, really this is more bullish for the year because You've already done so much. How much more is there left to do? So really, it, it, it you know, if you makes you know, we get the TLTROs, and person would argue, you see, it's even you're going to see more stimulus. Well, there's still not there's not enough tools in the toolbox, which will probably would prevent the euro from like, you know, really sinking very low for another extended move lower. Whereas the the US can start to you know embark on a, a cutting cycle and really that opens the door for the dollar to pull back and by de facto the euro push up. Policy ammunition is limited and it makes sense for the ECB to keep its power dry now. Saving for a potential adverse shocks that might come along, uh, being a pair by economist Luigi Speranza said Draghi's term is coming to an end and the council may be reluctant to tie the hands of a successor. That makes sense too. The ECB will meet. Um, economists poll, let me see, Okay, first stage, how about worry about that? Now, the risk. Draghi's problem is that a global trade war shows no signs of de-escalating. Italy is again in conflict with the East European Commission. German industry continues to post dismal figures. Stocks are tumbling. And on top of that, inflation expectations, the ECB's top worry are steadily declining, raising the risk of that becoming more dislodged. Indeed, in Philip Lane's first policy meeting as chief economist, the ECB is expected to cut some of its inflation projections. A big cloud hanging over the ECB government. And look, folks, this is another thing to cut. So this is areas where I think t- today... Uh, as we're, you know, post, post ECB, I think we can see some pretty whipping volatility back and forth. And, um, but then eventually, I think the euro will, will have that undertone bid to go higher once we get past the NFP, but I think we'll whip around quite a bit. 
A big cloud hanging over the ECB is the visible decline in the market-based inflation expectations. Uh, we would not rule out the ECB changing its interest rate forward guidance again this week, although this is not our base case scenario. The ECB targets an inflation rate of just below 2%. Drugs also expect to stick to his message that the rebound is merely delayed and not derailed. And I think he'll stay with that too. And, because really you would just create – uh, a real big cloud that once been thinking to a certain extent, what do they know that we don't know and really could really weaken the euro. And I don't think he's going to go and do something like that. Once again, without being their fault, he can open the door for further stimulus because it's, it's the U S and China and the U S versus the world type of thing that's causing all the angst. I mean, that's it. So he doesn't have to necessarily look at, what's being so wrong with the Eurozone economy while still being able to offer, like I said, TLTRO, TL, TLTROs. But some may be losing confidence since uh, since high record employment, solid uh, wages, and several years of unexpectedly good economic growth have failed to boost prices. Easy monetary policy will be needed for a long time. Okay, let's go and move into the analysis. So we know we're have, we kind of have a good, little bit of a flavor of what we want to do. So let's go and start with the Euro. And I thought, especially you know, day like today, and we've already had big moves. Kind of, let's kind of give a thinking of what we're as we're looking at the ECB. What are we looking at? Okay, so as far as you know, we kind of get that thing. Okay, they can be dovish. We don't think they're going to be real dovish, and it makes a case why they wouldn't be real dovish. And about him keeping the powder dry, so the risk to the downside would seem rather minimal. I don't think Draghi's going to come out and say, "Wow, things we really have to open up everything." and I think he just – if he doesn't have to, the point is he doesn't have to, and the risk of doing something like that would really shake a lot of confidence when he doesn't have to do it when you could easily just blame the U.S. Um, for all the woes because it's throwing everything in tumult. Okay, so that being said, uh, where can we go? Well, I think we could go and take out the, the 12 area here potentially. Now, how far can we pull back? Well, let's do a little bit of a fib on here, see if we can't get a bit of a confluence. Okay, 50% is 12.07, 50% of the move. And we can get rid of this. It's no longer needed. So, as I mentioned, Twelve oh seven, and look right there, eleven ninety two. I like that area right there. So let's go on in. Call eleven ninety three. So that's going to be our support. You could punch maybe as low as right there, eleven eighty eight. Yeah, okay, let's go there. You see that? 11.88. Right there. So that's going to be our, our bias chart support. Now, what we got to look at... What we would want to not do is, and I think this would be important just as equally, then I think that is a very good level, though, because look, for two reasons. Not only, okay, that's a good pullback area, it comes back here. If we were get a two-hour close below 1188, no bueno, no bueno at all. Okay, so uh, what we want to not see is, let's say we take off here, and let's say we make it up to about 1220, we start rotating lower. And Draghi says whatever, and we start keep on sliding, and we get a foothold below 1288. As I said, no bueno. But I don't think that that's going to be the case. My thinking would be if we get the TLR, TLTR or whatever, and may not even make it all the way back here. But I'm just saying, let's say we come down here, you get long. Uh, I said that's just talking about good two-way action. We may see a move back up here to where we're at right now, 1241, see the market rotate lower, maybe try and hold, make another move, which might take us up to about – 
1250 ish and then we pull back again as we get ahead of the NFP and we'll see what happens after that. Then once we get past NFP, then we can open our doors to moving higher. Can we challenge these new highs? I don't think so at this point. And I'm talking today, but I'm talking about even post NFP. Um, because we've already knocked out a lot of shorts. I mean, we knocked the heck out of a lot of shorts. You know what I mean? So can we move higher? Yeah, I think we can move higher and we can build toward that and maybe eventually we'll get up here, but we knocked the heck out of a lot of shorts here. I mean, like we talked about that yesterday, talking about price structure. So we talked about, hey, look, yeah, the year's a bunch of junk. I'm short from here. I added on here, blah, blah, blah. And they're trying to wait for it to come back. It doesn't even make it to 1220. It starts to take off. And we talked about this yesterday. Remember we said, you know, they'll probably be putting their stops just above this high here, maybe at 1285, maybe 1287. And look, I mean, when we started getting above 1313 13 even. They were really putting them under some kind of pressure. So I think you knocked a lot of people out of the box yesterday. So it's not like as if you had that same pressure that people are chewing on their nails with the shorts. They've been knocked out. So I think even if we got past NP, I'm not so sure we'd take out these highs. Maybe we'd come up here. We'll have to see. We don't get that far ahead. But I'm saying today I think we can see some nice little back and forth action, especially if you consider the volatility that we saw yesterday. Uh, it suggests that, you know, once again, a lot of shorts got knocked out. So any moves back up here, probably people would take that because, once again, we did get poor ADP, but you you could – we've seen divergence before with the ADP and the NFP. So you could <clears throat> have something like 24,000, which we did have an ADP, but maybe NFP uh, uh, is not that number. Maybe it's – even if it's poor, let's say it's – 101 or something like that. My point being is that we could end up pulling back down here again ahead of NFP, and then so it gets back beyond that, then we can open the door for the euro to move higher, although I don't necessarily expect it to be taken off these highs. So hopefully that makes some sense there. Uh, resistance, this one is tricky. Uh, now, resistance... Would have to be right there, twelve seventy eight. Well, let's just call it the twelve eighty. Uh, twelve seventy seven is a fifty percent. Let's call it twelve eighty, because my my thinking is, <clears throat> if we rally them up here, you'll have some people taking off their longs ahead of NFP. Doesn't mean you can't punch higher, but so we're going to go with twelve eighty as our resistance. And let's move into cable. So hopefully, hopefully that gives us a good lay of the land for ECB. Hang on a second. Well, things are getting turned around a little bit here in cable. Um, let's see, we had on our, haven't paid that much attention to cable for the last few days. We had 27.45 and the lie was, oh, not bad. 27.44, well, 27.43 and a half, four, oh, like we're up by a pip and a half. Um, hmm. No, it's not bad at all. Up by one pip. Um, we're still having a tough time here. I'll just move that just a little bit lower. We'll go twenty seven thirty four. Support mm. 
This has been pretty good. Holy smokes. We had 2670. Our line was actually 2767. I guess we pulled that off the daily, but that tagged it right there on the level. I think we're just kind of trapped in here. Let's just move that just a hair lower. There's your risk right there, 2650. Let's go into the Aussie. Well, we've talked about this importance of the 7027. Um, I think we have, we still have that as our, our bias chart resistance, if I remember correctly. Yep. I'm going to leave it there for 7027 so they can take out the stops and run them up in there. Support, <clears throat> probably that 6944, 6960. Okay, we actually put it on here at 60. <clears throat> it looks like that's where they went to. Yeah, that was our bias chart support right there. 69, 60. 61. But, um, we're really going to keep that the same here. No changes. I still like them trying to make a bump up here to 7027. Let's go move into the Kiwi. At 66.56, they did get up higher, 66.68. Um, well, look at this bar here. That made the sense, too, because that was actually our target, remember? Um, let's see if we have any out in the notes here. Yeah, opens a challenge. See that a daily close about sixty five seventy six opens a challenge to well, put it in the wrong way, but opens a challenge to sixty six fifty six at thirty eight percent. Um, we're gonna stay with the sixty six fifty six here on the thirty eight percent right there and support. We mentioned sixty five eighty six. We'll stay with that also on support. No changes on this. Let's go and move into the dollar cab. We've talked about that already. That pretty much hit, hit it onto the pit. Low is 63. High bias chart support was 62. We'll probably do dather around here. Um, potentially, they can still break a little bit lower. That would take us down to 33, 35. I don't know if I really want to hit that for today. Possibly tomorrow, though, but we'll see. We'll see. But we've already had a pretty good fall in here. Mm. 
for today, we're still going to keep that here for right now. And um, resistance. We probably had 15 as our resistance. We'll take a look. We had a weight. Hmm. Boy, they've been a pretty nice little snap back. The resistance would have come in right there. Really, I didn't think it would punch up that high, but be 34, 36. Let's use that as a resistance. See right there? Right. 34, 36. Let's keep it pretty tiny. Go to dollar peso. <clears throat> this was all over the map. Um, I was hoping to get a scalp short yesterday, and I was being really very careful because you know it was early Asian trading. Not a whole lot of volume there, folks. I was hoping we'd jump into here, and then we'd stall. And I thought that would be a nice little short, but it's really only going to be a scalp short. But it didn't make it. I was hoping we could take up these highs. And then we faded here, and then the risk reward just be just awesome. It seems it didn't happen. I mean, we did move higher, but we didn't take out the highs. So um, we're all over the roadmap on this thing. Um, and really, it's headline driven. So you really have to be careful on this. Um, if you still want to fool with it, uh, resistance is going to be 88 for right now. And we can get there. Uh, usually we're looking on the intraday, but we can definitely get there with these news headlines. And um, I think they'll get it resolved, though. But uh, <clears throat> Support. Now let's move into the daily. Support, let's say right here, the 56. We'll go with the 56 right now. We've already had our... Move down here. We didn't get to 41, the 30%, but for short term basis until things resolve, it's going to be the 56. Mm, Dolly in. We're trading pretty tight in here. This thing is tight as a drum. And that's why, like I said, I posted in the room. I mentioned that even the wrap up, uh, the roundup. I, I posted that two days before, which was I was saying, hey, look, the resistance is 835. I mean, 837. We made it up to 836, but at the time with 825, my thought was, I don't think we can go a whole lot higher, considering how much the spoons have been. Now we did put, we moved up our bias chart resistance yesterday. I think it was 844. Yeah, and the high was what. Um, 849. Okay, but we haven't moved a whole lot off this. Um, it's you know, really disappointing when you consider. Look at the spoons at 2830. Holy moly, 2835. Um, and look at this. It's just down in the dirt. Uh, we're going to stay. This has been pretty solid here. So now we'll move it right back to it, which we had our buy chart before, which is 837. So we'll go with 837. Look, they might be able to blast if we got some good news out of the Mexico thing, but it'll be a one blip wonder. Because, um, like, think of it this way: if the spoos have rallied already, freaking what a hundred handles? And look, I mean, hundred handles. Holy smokes! You think we'd be up here at nine twenty-seven? It just shows you how much damage has been done and you know, the move towards the year. The dolly in is telling you something's up overall in risk. When the spoos move a hundred handles or so, and look at the look at the poor bounce here. Um, downside seven ninety one. And moving into the cash doll index. Mm -hmm. 
course, they're ninety seven fifty six. Actually, you got a little bit higher right at that close. You see that? Let's try it. Ninety-seven sixty. Now that's really pushing it, but the reason is, is because we've got ECB, and what if they come? Blah 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 blah. Well, here's the deal. That is, you now someone was asking yesterday about the line of the sand, and um, to me, I was saying this is the true line of the sand here. You got past the ninety-seven eighty-one, but really, it's even closer than that. Um, yesterday, they were asking where's the resistance. I said, well, buyer's chart resistance today is ninety-seven thirty-one. We were trading just below that at the time, and we finally eked above it, but we slid back. But it's going to be. We're looking at ninety-seven sixty on the daily. Obviously, here is at 69. This would be like as if we got some phenomenal. I'm going to keep this here because if we've got some kind of phenomenal um, jobs number tomorrow, they would fade into this 81. That's my that thought. They would run the stops, but they would fade it into 81, I would believe. So we're going to keep that there. Um, but for today... ECB wise, because it's not directly affected through the dollar. I mean, you know, like let's say a, uh, NFP. So uh, we're going to go with 9760. 9760. The resistance. We have more here at 69, but I think it'd have a pretty tough time trying to get beyond that. So let's go with 9760. Support, we already talked about 96.79. Um, we're going to, we'll keep it there. Uh, well, we've already got there. I mean, we've already got the 96.79. We actually got to 96.75, so we're off by four ticks. And we had this, you see right here, this 81. So wonderful confluence. And we just took it out two pips low. You see that right there? That's where we put our, our bias chart resistance. Uh, I mean, our uh, bias chart support for 79. Um, we'll just go with here, 9689, 9689. And go into uh, cross rights. We had 72 cents yesterday, and the market went right to 72 cents. I actually covered this in face because we had already put our number up in here, and look at that, went right to that. Um, So we're going to tighten this just a little bit. We'll go with 7190. Thank 
port. Let's move this back down here to 7146. We mentioned this also. Remember, I told you about the euro, the yen pairs, and so <clears throat> I was looking at the dollar yen, and to me, the one thing that was you know the biggest impact across the board was the spoons were getting that bounce back, and maybe things going to work out with Mexico and stuff like that. So the dollar yen really should have we should have seen some good um, I'm trying to think of the word. Um, some good bait on that and see that thing really react. And that's what my thinking was, wow, watch out for the other yen pairs because we're not getting anything out of the dollar yen. And certainly that has capped that. As I mentioned, um, FX Macro was saying that looking for 123, we didn't even make it up here to 22. Well, look at that, look at this piss poor shown here, here. So that was my thinking is if it can't even do it against the dollar yen, Against it, um, you know, the dollar yen can take off in light of what was happening in spoofs. This yen is just going to stay strong, and that's exactly what's happening. Um, there's going to be resistance 2210. We'll call it 2209. Let's go move in here. And on the downside, on the downside, twenty one, twenty two. You know, folks, this, the, these yen, the yen pairs, I don't say the yen pairs, but just the yen in general. Once again, remember the piss poor showing of the dollar yen. And forget about the dollar in and of itself, because the dollar yen can sometimes move of its own volition. And But look at the huge, massive run you've seen in, in S&Ps. And the dollar yen hasn't done anything, which was why I was warning about the yen pairs. But on a bigger scope, it's really telling you something about – where are things gonna go? So um, I think it's a harbinger of things much worse. Um, anyway, uh, let's see, uh, right there, 21, 24. Mm 
Let's go to the URL on. Boy, this one's really been stuck. I mean, oh my goodness, I would thought we'd really at least try to make one move to come apart. Um, boy, have we gone just dead. Graveyard dead. It's been hanging around here. Um, mm -mm -mm. I don't see anything happening in this thing for right now. Um, just going to stick with the, the, the zone in here for right now until something can trigger something, but I just don't see anything here. Sixty one, let's go sixty one fifty eight. Sixty sixty. I'll move it up the whopping big ticks. Two big pips, I should say. Uh Let's go to Kiwi, Euro Kiwi. Well, Kiwi's been pretty strong, but we're getting a little bit tired, long in the tooth, on a short-term basis, I believe. So, right there, 69.23. Resistance right back here at the top of the zone, seventy oh seven. Ossian. I'm just going to stick with this range in here. These yen pairs are something else. Um, 75.84. I don't know how we got this. 74.94. Guppy, oh my goodness, this has been something else to itself. Oh, I'm gonna still same thing. Gonna keep the keep the ranges right in here. Thirty six ninety five thirty eight two. No change. And sterling odd. But we're able to punch up a little bit higher um, on this. Uh, Resistance we had eighty two oh five. We are we were able to punch up higher. We got up to what eighty two thirty three. Resistance will come in here. Um, and look how quickly it rolled over. We we'll go with eighty two forty seven. And eighty one twenty nine for support. So that's it here with the uh, bias chart. Um, we have data coming up at the top of the hour, and I'll get this posted. And thanks for joining us here on the European Crossover Webinar.